guys, welcome back to the video. So if you guys are new, my name is Mike. So in this video, before we get started, I have a couple pieces that I want to just button up on the Evo. So obviously, we are here where Ariana is stored. And it's just like super, super tiny things. So we disconnected the battery, just so the battery doesn't drain over time. I'm so happy I don't have to put that silly that hood prop because we have this that stays open and it's so easy to work on. Alright, so what we have for the Evo is something super, super small. I actually just got this at the Wreckers. They're just like bumpers for the bottom of the hood here since they're not there. And I also have the correct washer jet. Since the ones we have are kind of weird, I don't know if you can see, but the nozzle's pointed this way. It's supposed to be like up and down. So I got the correct one from the Wreckers. we are replacing those and hopefully it will tidy up the hoses here a little bit just so it looks a little bit nicer when I open the hood. All right, so now that all of these little bumpers, this little tiny one here too, this one we'll see how it closes. The gap in here is actually a little bit better too. Before it was a little bit low. Yeah, that's a lot better. These ones are actually out of a Chevy Cruze. So Chevy parts on my Evo has got to go. And these are the correct Mitsubishi Lancer from the 10th generation. So this is gonna be going where it should be. Okay, pull them in a little bit. Yeah, they're more or less sitting flush now. Same with the other side. All we need to do is connect the hose for the washer and we should be all good to go. And boom. All right, so now that it's all done, let's go ahead and get on with the rest of the video. All right, so fake parts versus real parts. This is a very controversial topic in my opinion because there's so many people that are happy and don't see the point of buying real parts. And there are also some people that stand beside buying real parts, supporting the original creator, whether that is a T37 by Volt Racing or buying the original Rocket Bunny. The issue with this topic is sometimes the two sides don't see each other's point, if that makes sense. So from where I stand, I have the Z, which is a car that I would most likely buy rep parts since this is my daily. I'm gonna be driving this car way more than the Evo. And it's a car that I most likely gonna curb, either curb a wheel, scrape, get scratched off, get a door ding at a parking lot. Since this car is out and used way more than the Evo is. Now with that being said, the reason why I would, for example, spend more money on the Evo is I don't drive the car as much as the Z. For example, buying a lift that is $1,500 from Japan, first of all, one that takes a really long time, two, it's most likely made out of fiberglass. If any of you guys have ever used fiberglass parts before and if you scrape on it, there's usually no going back unless you got someone that's really good with fiberglassing, they can repair that. But riding a $1,500 lift on your daily, in my opinion, isn't really a good idea. But that being said, the Evo is the type of car that I would spend that money on since that's more of my show car and the car that I take out once in a while. Now with that being said, let's talk about what makes a part a real part compared to a fake part. So the real parts would basically be the brand or the company that created the design. For example, Rocket Bunny, uh, TE37s by Wolf Racing, BBS, they all have that iconic look. They all have that iconic design for that particular part. Buying from the original company would most likely be more expensive than buying a replica or a fake part. At the end of the day, you're supporting that company and you're supporting what they're doing and that gives them the funding to keep going and keep creating more kits for newer cars, for different cars and stuff like that because without them, these big companies probably wouldn't have that design without them. So that's also one thing to consider if you're in the market for a particular part. Now with that being said, again just like comparing the Z and the Evo, if I were to buy a lift for the Z, I probably wouldn't go out and buy a brand new or find an original Nismo lift for the 350 because first of all, it'll be super, super expensive. It'll just cost way too much. I don't wanna risk scraping an original lip and end up repairing it. It's just gonna be such a big hassle, especially on my daily. Another thing to consider when buying fake or real parts is the fitment. Now, to some people, fitment may not be the most important thing out there, 
to me I really like looking at a kit and that fits just perfectly fits flush with the, the original body lines of the car you can tell by the craftsmanship of how the part is made whether it's the authentic one or a replica mind you there are some really good replicas out there but at the end of the day but at the end of the day if it's important to you that you have an original rocket bunny or you have real wheels then you should maybe go out and save up the extra money and actually buy the real part a perfect example of this is my Evo. I did buy a cheaper carbon fiber hood a little while ago. I put it on and I wasn't really happy with the fitment. Although the carbon fiber hood looked pretty good on the car, I just wasn't happy with it. And we would have to basically hammer out and adjust the overall like hood hinges just so I can get the proper fitment because if you were to just bolt on the hood it would be a little bit higher there is really no way around that other than hammering down the hinges I just didn't want to do that I feel like that's not the proper way to install an aftermarket part if you have to butcher it in so my pain I sold the hood um, there was nothing wrong with it if you're all right with the fitment which the new buyer was I let him know about that and he was perfectly happy with it so I ended up buying the hood for me I like having better fitment on my hood so I ended up buying a garage very carbon fiber hood for the Evo and that is basically like OEM fitment it's probably the closest thing I've ever seen to OEM fitment for for an aftermarket hood that's always one thing to consider when buying real versus fake body parts is the fitment if you're really anal about the fitment and the spacing by the fender and by the front bumper that's all something to consider because if you were to buy, for example, a replica kit that costed $1,500 and you have to spend the big bucks at the body shop to get all the gapping right, you're gonna end up spending the same amount as if you were to buy the original Rocket Bunny or White Body or whatever you're buying. So that's always something to consider. I made that mistake, I went through that, so that's just a heads up from me. This might be a little bit controversial, but another reason why some people buy real parts instead of fake parts and are really, really, how should I say, passionate, I guess, in regards to real parts versus fake parts is the exclusivity. So, for example, if you have a real Rocket Bunny and the other dude beside you has a fake Rocket Bunny, you have that, I guess, exclusivity that you have the real version and he has the fake version. I don't know, in my opinion, if I see a good looking car, whether it has real parts or fake parts, I appreciate it just as equally as seeing a car with real parts. Although, if you do have the real parts, that's just an extra thumbs up in my opinion. That, I don't know, it shows that you didn't go the cheap route and just build up your car super, super fast. You actually took the time and the effort to go out and get the real part from Japan. I don't know, in my books, that's always something cool especially in terms of like wide bodies, carbon fiber parts and stuff like that. I just really like seeing authentic, real parts. It's not only with body parts and wheels. For example, you can buy fake ride seats or bridge seats depending on how you choose to pronounce it. Usually the fake seats would be kind of loose and when you're sitting down in them, it would kind of squeak and it doesn't really hold you as well. I do have some friends that actually track their car and I asked them, have you compared like NRG seats versus like an actual Sparco or a Bride seat? And the only thing they can say is the real deal racing seats actually feel a lot more solid than the replica NRG or the cheaper made seats. Just, they just feel a lot more solid. So if that's something that's important to you, you actually want to get the performance benefit out of that certain or particular part then I would advise you to buy the real deal. Especially if it has to do with your safety. Like if you're not pushing your car to the limit, then I guess it may be just as strong or a little bit weaker than your OEM. But in my opinion, the real deal is the way to go if you wanna push your car and actually take it out to the track and see how your car does and performs. All right, so to wrap up this video, basically sum it all up. Before you go and buy a real part or a big part, consider where you're going and what you're doing with your build. If you want to build a car that looks good, that you're going to take to car meets and you're not really looking to compete and you kind of just want to daily your car, unless you have really deep pockets, maybe consider buying the cheaper option because in my opinion, I just don't see the point in me buying like a full Nismo kit for my fair lady 
and end up bottoming out and ruining that super expensive kit. Although I would love and I would prefer to have the real kit, it just isn't practical for, for what I'm doing with my car. Dealing it, driving it in the snow, which that would honestly kill me if I see someone with like an authentic Rocket Bunny Z in the winter just driving it. I, that would kill me because there's so many things that can go wrong. I don't know, that's just my opinion. Consider what you're doing and where you're going with your build, whether it's worth going out and buying the real part or if you're probably just gonna end up smashing the the real part and you're gonna regret spending 1500 bucks on a lip end up getting into a car accident or rear-ended i hope none of that happens to you but that's just something to consider obviously the quality of, of the overall part and the fitment that you're probably gonna get with a lot of car parts you get what you pay for if you're gonna go out and buy the cheapest lip now i know a lot of you may say i got the cheapest lip for my honda civic and it fits so good has perfect fitment good for you but maybe you were lucky with that one but get what you pay for for with most car parts and that's something to consider if you're gonna go out and buy the cheapest lip and it doesn't fit right fitment overall quality and of course if it matters to you because some with some people it does matter other people really don't care they just want their car to look good and look good for themselves other people like building what i like to call instagram cars where they have all the real stuff and the car looks super good in pictures just to get more likes followers on instagram or youtube subscribers or wherever you guys are going with that build if exclusivity really matters that much to you maybe go out and buy the real part and it's always good to know at the back of your head that you're supporting the real creator so if that matters to you maybe go out and spend the extra bucks if you want to support the real creator at the end of the day it is up to you guys so I gave my opinion on buying real parts versus fake parts. What you should probably think about before you go out and spend the big bucks on whatever you're buying. Always consider what you're doing with your build, but that is all the time I have for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and join the Annie Perfect Society. Peace out, and make it happen.